Well, good morning. Here we are, Tuesday, the 1st of August, another month gone. I'm Pastor Bruce Kishnick, Senior Pastor here at Grace Lutheran in New Albany, Indiana. Good to have you with me this morning. The title for our devotion this morning is Complain, Complain, Complain. And the reading is from Philippians 2, verses 14 to 18. St. Paul writing, Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault, in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and the service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. If there is one thing that Americans are truly really good at, it is complaining. In every newscast on any channel you want to try, you will hear people complaining. They will complain about the government, they will complain about the bus schedules, they will complain about their children's teachers, they complain about their bosses, their union, their pay, their workplace, their co-workers. They complain about their professional baseball team and their record. They complain about the price of gas and the price of their groceries. They complain about the tomatoes at the grocery store and they complain about having used the self-checkout lanes. And do they ever complain about the weather? It's too hot or it's too cold, it's too wet, it's too dry. Complain, complain, complain. And the interesting thing is the children of Israel were no different. They complained about their, the predicament they found themselves in when they found their backs against the Red Sea. And behind them were coming the chariot corps of Pharaoh. They complained about the thunder and the lightning at Mount Sinai when God came down to visit them. They complained about that they had no water. And then they complained that we have no food. Then they complained that all they ever had to eat was manna. We have lost our appetite for all we ever see is this manna. And they complained when they had to go out in the morning and pick it up and complained that they couldn't gather more than a day at a time, except on Friday. So, you know, what are you going to do? They complained about Moses. They complained about Yahweh. They complained about everything. And I guess that's part of human nature. I'd like to say that if I was the king of America and could decree anything, and had to be obeyed, I believe that I would decree that every single American would have to spend one month living in a third world country. They would be sent to a village somewhere in Africa or in India or in Pakistan or in Mongolia. They would live with and live amongst the people who call that place home. They would eat what the locals eat, and they would spend their days doing exactly the things that the local people had to do every day to survive. They would sleep where they slept. They would do what they did. Because I think, you know, not, not every first world nation, well, I'd, I'd say now every first day world nation has its share of complainers. But third world nations, I suppose, do too. But Americans in particular are spoiled rotten. We whine and we complain about everything. We expect to be spared standing in line. We expect to be spared from having our plans delayed. We'd, we expect to be spared from having to sit in a doctor's um, in the waiting room while he has an emergency that has to be dealt with. We expect grocery shelves to be fully stocked and not just with the basics. Oh, no. We expect to have a half a dozen choices there and a few exotic ones besides. And if anything we want is missing, we complain loudly. St. Paul in his letter to the Philippians uses the words joy and rejoice 16 times. 
It's often referred to as his letter of joy. He writes that letter to those who have much, and he writes that letter to those who have little. To all of them, he says that considering what Christ has already won for us and, what I, and the salvation that is ours through his death and his resurrection, he says we believers ought to rejoice greatly whatever the circumstances, whether we have plenty or whether we are in need. It is gratitude that is the antidote to complaining, to realize all that we have been given. So St. Paul talks about all the things that he has cast off or all the things that he has lost for the sake of Christ. Now, he was once a rising star amongst the Pharisees and the rabbis of Judaism. He had the ear of the high priest, and he had access to the leadership of Israel. He was respected, he was trusted, and maybe what he relished most, he was feared, feared by those that he was pursuing. But then Jesus Christ came along and knocked him to his knees and called him into the service for the church. And from that moment onward, St. Paul says he lost all things. And he also goes on to say, I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him. He could complain greatly, but he finds comfort and contentment in his knowledge of Jesus and the promises that were made to him through Christ Jesus in his baptism. So why complain, he says. The kingdom is ours. So we, Christians living in this land of plenty, also ought to keep our perspective. We have the highest standard of living of any generation before us. All of us have more of everything than we could ever possibly need. But if it were all to be taken away tonight, we would still have our Lord Jesus. We would still be the children of God, and we would still have the hope and the promise of eternal life with the one who created us, redeemed us, and who sanctifies us by the truth. When we catch ourselves complaining about things that an African villager couldn't even mentally conceive, uh, that's a moment we should stop, humble ourselves, repent, and then give thanks to God for all that he has given us. Rather, we should rejoice and give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy truly endures forever. So you think about that the next time you feel the need to complain, I'll try to remember the same thing. Complain, complain, complain. That is the way of the human heart. And yet we have a God who has done so much for us that we really ought to always respond with a sense of thanksgiving and a, thanks and a, and a sense of gratitude that Christ Jesus has claimed us as his own. May your day be in him. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you with much to thank you for, as always. And Father, we ought to thank you every day, not only for the physical blessings we enjoy as Americans, but particularly to give you thanks for all that we have obtained through our Savior, Jesus. Father, we ask that you'd bless us, and in those times when we find ourselves stymied by one thing or another, and when we start to complain, help us to catch ourselves at that and to repent of that, and to humble ourselves, and to be patient, and to be grateful. Father, grant us your grace in this day. Watch over and bless our loved ones wherever they may be. And we commend ourselves and our loved ones into your care, through our Savior, our Lord Jesus. Amen. A couple of things to remind you about. Confirmation classes and Grace on Wednesday are about to kick in. The 5th uh, through 8th graders are asked to come along with one of their parents on Wednesday next week, the 9th. And then Grace on Wednesday for all of the kids kicks off on Wednesday the 16th. And so uh, classes will be from 6 to 7.30. The supper will be served starting at 5.30. And I uh, want to see all the kids come. And the bus trip to Indianapolis, that is full. If you are signed up for that, we leave at 8.15, no later, on the 15th of August. And uh, 
we're going to have lunch at Portillo's and we're going to see the Indianapolis 500 Museum as well as uh, a fellow by the name of Andy who has quite a collection in a private one. So we're going to leave at 8.15. We'll probably be back about 6 or 7 o'clock. And all the seats are spoken for unless they don't make their payment by this uh, coming Sunday. And at that point, they get thrown off the bus. So <laughs> you might pay attention. Anyway, God be with you, and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.